Mr. Anderson. Can you please state your first and last name and spell your last name? John Farrell, F-A-R-R-E-L-L. -L. And how are you employed? I'm a sergeant with the Somerset Police Department. How long have you uh, worked in law enforcement? Uh, since June of 2013. And are you, do you also have training in first aid or emergency response? I do, I'm currently licensed as an emergency medical responder. And were you working on July 30th of 2022? Yes. On that day, were you dispatched to the Apple River stabbing? I was. What was the, if you recall, what was the initial information from dispatch? Uh, initial information was uh, people stabbed on the river, possibly one dead. I believe it was three victims as we were responding to the scene. And did you head immediately to the scene or did you have to go somewhere else first? I had to grab a set of bolt cutters uh, out of the PD garage and then I went to the Sunrise Camp entry and had to cut the lock to get in and then I went directly to the scene. And is that uh, the Sunrise Camp entry, is that uh, private property? Yeah. And is that was that the best access to get to where the incident was reported to have happened? Yeah, there's a road that you can get on off Sunrise Drive in Somerset, and then it'll take you back to where the scene was. And the is that a campground that's in operation or no? No. And the, the, have the owners given permission for law enforcement to use that when needed? Yeah, we had spoken to them in the past about it. Were you one of the first officers to arrive on scene? I was. And how many officers, if you recall, arrived there originally? I don't recall a specific number. Um, I know as I was um, approaching the scene, I saw a Deputy Durand come down um, from the highway and then Officer Stumo was behind me. And there was a, also another deputy that was behind me that was at the gate when I opened it. And so what was the, can you kind of describe what the situation was when you got to the river? Yeah, there was, uh, I was being flagged down initially by people at the river bank. Um, as I approached them, I saw one guy come out that was holding his side. Uh, it was later determined that he had a stab wound on his side that was being directed down uh, into the river where a, a female was sitting in a tube um, whilst uh, bystanders were holding pressure on her left side. Um, when I looked, got down into the river, um, when I looked at her, I had noticed that uh, I could see what I believed to be bod her bodily organs outside of her body. Uh, Deputy Durand and I worked with bystanders to uh, get her out of the river. Um, during that time, we were trying to determine what, what you know, what was going on, where is the suspect? Um, there's a lot of information coming in at once, a lot of people in one spot. Um, we were able to get her out. The other person that was there that was stabbed came up as well. I uh, retrieved the medical kit from my squad car. Um, provided some medical equipment to the other officers before I went to the river uh, and then headed upriver to uh, where the other uh, victims were. And were there, while you were at the river when you initially got there, were there still groups of tubers going down the river? Yeah. And was there a good crowd of tubers around also? Yeah. Did you know who was witnesses, who were just bystanders, or was it kind of just people everywhere? There was people everywhere. I didn't know who was who. I mean, it was obvious to me who was injured. But other than that, I didn't know who witnesses were, suspects were, what anyone else's involvement was. Did you have a body cam on? I did. Does your body camera indicate the date and the time of the footage on the bottom of the screen? It does. Permission to approach? Yes. What's been marked as Exhibit 22? Uh, what's that labeled as? Feral BC video. BC body cam? Yes. Uh, Judge, I move to publish portions of it. I'm going to skip around a little bit to not show some of the up-close graphic parts. So first, any objection to Exhibit 22? All right, receive. Go ahead and publish the portions you wish to show. Mm -hmm. 
Tell us when you're ready. Oh, and I'll ask another question. If we watched the first minute, would it just be you driving there? Yeah. We're going to start at 57 seconds, Judge. We're going to play to about the five minute mark for this first segment. I got a cutter! So we're paused at 2.53. Um, can you see the time stamp on the bottom there? I can. What's the time? 15.54.45, which was 3.54 p.m. The time of law enforcement's first arrival on scene? Yeah. Yes. Can we have the screen again, please? So 15 and 54 would be 3.54 p.m.? Yes. Is that right, what I wrote up there? Yes. We're going to keep playing until about the five-minute mark. Stabbing already up here. The one kid that walked by you missed too. Yep, we saw that. Okay, she got a knife on you. Cut here. I have to hook these 
I know you do. I know you don't. You're doing good. Hey, keep holding pressure. Okay. Yeah, that's why I think the helicopter is overhead and holding. Yeah. I think we can just pick her up. I think we can just pick her up. She's got a dissertation here. We stopped at 452. And did you end up assisting to carry Riley out of the river? Yes. Where'd you bring her? Uh, just up to the paved road there by the squad cars. What'd you do after that? I uh, retrieved the medical equipment from my squad car and provided it to the officers who were tr tending to her, the other uh, subject that was stabbed next to my, that was sitting next to my squad car, and then I headed into the river. And we're going to play from about the eight minute mark. 7.59 is the timestamp. <laughs> We're gonna have to get your butt up a little bit here. Yep, yep. Way up. Yep, we're going. Okay. Ready, Chase? And the guy is still walking up the river. He's the suspect? Still, yes, he's in the whole still had to find out he was still yeah, stabbing people. 4502 dispatch, we just received information. Suspect still has a knife and heading up river on foot. Forty five oh two dispatch, I'm just getting up to 06. It does appear that EMS is clear to get up here. Just make sure they know the suspect's so large. There's we got officers up there at our entry point. If we can get a boat, that'd be great. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, all right. Seals. You got a, if you need a seal. Yeah, I need, he's got the Okay, yep. We stopped at 10.50. That uh, first victim you stopped at and dropped off a chest seal, yeah. you later learned that was AJ or don't you know? I don't know. You know who that is up in the background there? Uh, which? On the bank to the right, that kind of obstructed by other people, but. The person that's being tended ten to medically and CPR is in progress. Um, I, I don't remember his exact name, but I believe his first name was Isaac. Okay. Did you, what did you do after this point? I went up to the group that was doing CPR on him. Um, and then assisted with that. Do you eventually assist 
getting people off the river? Yeah, when the uh, paramedics arrived, they came up the river, then I assisted in getting him out of there. How did you get um, Isaac off the river with when you had to wade up like that? Yeah, a uh, backboard was placed on inner tubes and then floated down the river. I don't have anything else. <clears throat> Mr. Trompison? Just briefly, um, so it, it appears initially you're in kind of responder, kind of assist mode. Is that fair? Yes. And at that point, uh, I'm assuming you're training. You're not, I don't want to say you're not interested, but you're focused on kind of what's going on and the investigation can kind of happen at a later point. Is That's that correct. Fair? That's correct. Um, at some point, your report indicates that you make it to the village park. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So from what we saw there in the times, how much later or how much time passes until you make it up to village park? Oh, I, I don't know the exact time. It's, it's, a it's not immediate. It's a significant time, but I don't know the exact time. Okay. And we heard on the tape that you're getting... Uh, information as as it's kind of coming in. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. Um, when you go to uh, Village Park, are you then starting to maybe switch over from emergency situation to kind of investigative situation? Is that fair? Yes. Okay. And you may contact at Village Park with a gentleman by the name of Eric Williams. Is that right? That's right. Okay. And does he come up to you or do you go up to him? Um, he, I had directed him out of the crowd to come talk to me. There was a group gathered together. Okay. So did you have some information that he might have information? Um, I had in information that the people in the group may have information, but as to who, who knew what and who was where, um, no, I didn't have that until I started talking to him. Okay. And he had provided you at least some inf some brief information about kind of what was going on, right? Yes. Okay. And he had provided you information um, that he was with Mr. Williams, right? Yeah, in the same group, yes. And he had provided you information as to kind of what Mr. Mew was doing yes. previously, right? Yes. That he was looking for a phone, right? That's correct. At that point, do not take this as critical. At that point, you don't have any other information as to what had actually happened. Is that fair? What I mean by that is, I know you saw people that had been injured, but how they were injured, the circumstances surrounding that, you didn't have that information, right? Some of the witnesses on, on the scene had mentioned stabbing that that's what had happened. Sure. Uh, but other than that, no. Okay. And you locate very, tell me if this is fair, you locate various uh, pieces of what may be physical evidence. Yeah. In, in your mind. Yes. Okay. And that was a shirt and a pair of swim goggles. Yes. Okay. Uh, are the goggles, goggles like you would see, are they snorkel goggles or are they goggles like a swimmer who's competing? I don't I don't remember exactly what they were. Okay. After your interview with Mr. Williams um, and your walking kind of of the river, is that your involvement in the case? Yeah, that's the involvement. Yeah, I was um, well. I had been given a ride back, and that's when you said, when I assisted with finding the evidence in the river, the T-shirt, the goggles. So there's that space between Village Park and where the incident actually had occurred, where I initially responded to. So I had gone from there back to that spot, and that's when I assisted in that searching where I found the T-shirt and the swim goggles. I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. So after that's done, your involvement in, in kind of what happened here has concluded. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So I, thank you. Mr. Anderson, anything else? Nothing else. All right. Thank you, Sergeant. You may step down. Who is the next witness?
Chase Duran. Sergeant Duran, please come forward. Please face the clerk, raise your right hand. She will administer the oath. Please have a seat in the witness chair. Mr. Smesta. I'll be state your name for the record, please. Chase Durand. Can you spell your last name? D-U-R-A-N-D. Uh, what do you do for a living? Uh, patrol sergeant with Sheriff's Office, San Craig County. How long have you worked in law enforcement? Uh, about 10 years. How long have you been a, a sergeant? About five years, I believe. Can you briefly describe your, your training to be a police officer? Uh, basic recruit school, 720 hours, and then um, attended several other FTO through the department and then several other schools following that, uh, SWAT school, um, boat patrol, um, several other trainings. Do you have any EMT training? Yes. Was that included as part of your law enforcement training or something you did separately? Um, we receive a basic first responder level training in the academy and then through our emergency response unit, we receive uh, follow on medical training from our tactical medics that's uh, assigned to our unit and have attended a uh, three-day um, trauma care training. Were you working back on July 30th of 2022? Yes, I was. Uh, did you get dispatched to the uh, incident on the Apple River? I did. Uh, what information were you given in the, the initial call? Uh, it was aired to us from dispatch that there have been several people stabbed on the Apple River and dispatch said it was near the 64 bridge in Somerset Township. Where were you located when you first got called? I was in the Holton area. About how far away? <laughs> About how far away? Uh, nine miles. Uh, did you drive over to the area where the, the call <laughs> was coming from? Yes, I responded emergent. Um, and the area I'm familiar with, uh, there's a private road underneath the bridge um, with no off ramp on the highway there on 64. I parked up on top of the um, overpass and then went down the embankment to the river. Um, when you arrived, were there other officers uh, on scene? I first saw Officer Farrell, or Sergeant Farrell from Somerset PD. Do you remember any other officers you saw? Um, once I got up river, when we waded to the river, and then came across Officer, officer Stumo at that location where the two victims were in the water still. All right, so before you get into the river, did you get involved in some of the activities that were going on on shore? Yes, uh, when I first arrived and made my way down the embankment, I came across, um, it was hectic and there was a lot of people near the bridge. Uh, there was one male subject who was able to walk, who had a, observed a, what looked like a stab wound. And then I was directed with Officer Fer or Sergeant Farrell to several other, sorry, to another female laying in her tube that had a uh, wound to her left side. We used uh, my soft stretcher to, with the help of uh, bystanders to evacuate her out of the water up to the road where I passed her off to another officer, deputy arriving. And after you did that, uh, did you enter the river? Yes. At that point, had you been given any information as to uh, who the suspect was or what they looked like? Once I um, entered the water, people were yelling that it was a guy wearing scuba gear and he went back up river. You didn't have a, a physical description? At that time, no. Uh, were you wearing a, a body camera at the time that you uh, responded to the river? I was. Uh, on my first arrival with the first two victims I came across, um, it wasn't recording. And then when I 
uh, checked it going up river. I had to open up, it was our old body cam system. I'd open up the phone app and uh, activate it. It wasn't turning on with the button. All right. So if I understand you, part of what you did isn't on your body cam? Correct. Um, would that have been the activities that you were involved in with Sergeant Farrell? Um, the initial response with the first two victims you located, and then once I entered the water to go up river, that's when my body cam turned on. Can I approach a witness, Josh? Yes, you may. Sergeant, I'm going to show you what's been marked as Exhibit 43. Uh, can you tell us what that is? Uh, flash drive. And on the label? Uh, Durand evidence with 43 on the... Is it BC oh. at the top? All right. Durand BC video. And BC stands for? Body cam. I'm going to ask to move for admission of 43 and ask to publish. Any objections to 43? Exhibit 43 is received. Go ahead and play. Your Honor, again, I'm going to just give a warning that some of the images on this body cam are, are graphic, so anybody who may be concerned may want to leave. So, members of the jury, um, what you're about to see is difficult. Um, it is evidence. You may consider it. Uh, watch as much as you can. And if you need to avert your eyes for a moment, you may. But I ask that you pay as close attention as you can because this is evidence in the trial. Mr. Smithson. We're going to start at the 29 second mark. We're ready. Yep. Okay. What does you see where the suspect was? for 19. You want me to go up river and start coming down, or I'm at the bridge right now? You want to start looking for the suspect. I'll work on a description. I heard one person say scuba gear. You guys see what happened? Who did it? You know who it is? No, no, it's just some Randall on the river. He's looked long. Five, five, nine, five, ten Russian looking guy. He went somewhere over there. What is he wearing? Hey, see him? Hey! I think they just went after him. I think he's up there. You get out of there. Get out! Get out! Where are you guys going? What? Oh, we need to know what it looks like. We got a lot of cops in the area. What does he look like? I don't fucking know. Hey, we got a canine coming. We can't track him if you guys tear up the whole center. 36. 
What's our furthest downriver casualty point? 64 bridge. 10 4th believed to be going downriver. I can head straight down there. Negative. Suspect went under the woods at the initial location, a quarter mile upriver from the 64 bridge. Did he go off on the north or south bank? South bank. The cider cars are on. Chase, do you want me to continue up to you or do you want me to take my flat up the road further into the woods? Yep. Up the river. Correction. Eric, just go to the woods. We need to see EMS here to get these people out of here. I just talked to the rescue. They're working on getting the boat into the water and up to the Okay. Hey, one of you hold him hands. 21 to 29. Hold it, 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 hold up along the riverbank, oh, if you can get guys, head that way, the road isn't that far from the riverbank. Just hold up there, okay? Just leave up there. Yeah, okay, you hold on, okay? Okay. for He'll cut the queen past their slots and stuff. Yeah, he'll point that way. What the what the fuck like wearing? Some shorts, clothes. Some shirts and a t-shirt. Okay. Uh, a white t-shirt. I know, you have a t-shirt off. Older, older man, older man, he's in his 50s, 60s. He's a half a knife. 46 to 29. Go ahead. I'm just coming through the ridge. Yeah, I was holding pressure on his stomach. Hold what? Pressure. Yep, I'll go to the end of the Sunrise Trail and we'll link up there. 8019 dispatch. Suspect information. 8019 goes to suspect. Being told a white male, some shorts, shirtless, armed with a knife, possibly 50 years old. One this person described him as Russian looking. Send for Do we have a color on those swim shorts? Negative. Can't get that yet. Uh, also, Two of the friends of the person ran off into the woods and are looking for the suspects. So we have some other people contaminating the area. Then for adult male, approximately 50 years of age, shirtless wearing unknown color swim shorts with a knife, and two friends of victims are out looking for the suspect as well. 1608. 8019 dispatch. Disregard. Where did the suspect go into the woods at? This way. We have a canine coming. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, 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 I know. I know. I saw him before the fight started. I have a rag. I don't know how much it's going to help. But if it's going to help anybody, okay. One here, one there. They don't know. No one knows. That's they said this region. They don't know exactly where. Okay. Uh, I have these two trauma bandages. I got a tourniquet and some quick spot V bolt. His butts are hanging out. The other one I haven't been over to that one yet. Let's throw that on. Here. Here. Do you know? I don't know if that was uh, We're just getting up at a six. Where it is you need us. 29 up the road here farther, try to set yeah. up the perimeter. Uh, at the end of Sunrise Trail here, it's pretty thick. I'm not going to be able to see much down here. I would say go to the highway and start looking on that way. 10-4, we'll be rubbed the highway. Nineteen to the dispatch. Nineteen. 
our two most critical patients are up here, upper river. Is this? No, 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 no. Can you guys see them? Yeah, we need an idea. Two critical patients, upper river. Do you have a team to go to extract them? I didn't catch that. We're a quarter mile up river from the bridge. We can see the squads. One, no vitals. CPR in progress. I believe I have EMS in the area. Do we have any helicopters in route for Lakeview or Lifelink? I'm trying to have two helicopters at this time. 8821 dispatch. About a tenth of a mile up river from the bridge. We have a male suspect with an abdominal stab wound. And a lap race to the leg. We have another male subject with a lateral flash across his abdomen. And we have one subject with a stab wound to the chest. Speed pattern progress. Central three victims, one tenth of a mile up river. Leg stab, open abdomen, and a chest stab. Speed pattern progress. Go ahead. Do we need additional agencies to assist with uh, perimeter? Yes. And I don't know, State Patrol's helicopter was in the area of Minnesota. I don't know if that's something we can utilize. Hey, 16 dispatch. If nourishment's available and see if Polk County can send some deputies down. Sergeant Duran, did were you able to watch that as we all watched it? Yes. At some point in the in your body cam, uh, did you run up into the woods? Yes. What was that all about? Uh, there was movement up in the woods, people yelling at somebody. I ran up there, uh, determined those two people that were going to go try to find the suspect. Um, I told him to come back due to us having a uh, canine coming, not to mess up the scent for the dog and then confuse the perimeter or any type of aerial drone or helicopter assets coming to assist searching. Did you know who those uh, folks were up in the woods that were looking for the suspect? No. Um, did you see yourself on, on your body cam saying that they were friends of the victims? Yes. I. Through the yelling in the crowd, I determined there was some type of relationship with the people. But as of today, you don't know if they had any connection to these victims? I don't know their exact connection. And what, uh, when you when you went up into the woods, um, you asked the one of the people up there what the what the victim or the suspect looked like. Yes. And what was his response? He didn't know. So it appears that from your body cam, at least, that you were coordinating the response to this incident? Yes. Is that part of your duties as a sergeant? Yes, it is. <clears throat> uh, at the same time, were you trying to get any info you could gather about who did it? Yes. And you were able to get some bits and pieces of that information? Yes, there was a lot of information being thrown at me or uh, people yelling, but the one person I had talked to um, and the yellow shirt had the most amount of information about the suspect. Um, were you also in, in the process uh, trying to set up a perimeter to make sure that the suspect didn't get away? Yes. Sustained. Um, at some point, did you call for a state patrol helicopter? Yes, when I was in Holton, I saw that Minnesota's um, state patrol helicopter was over Stillwater prior to coming to the call. And what was the purpose of calling the State Patrol, Minnesota State Patrol helicopter? Uh, their air assets have uh, thermal cameras. Wisconsin's airplanes do not. Did the Minnesota State Patrol helicopter respond to the area? I do not know. <clears throat> Nothing further. Mr. Tropicy. Good morning, sir. <clears throat> 
you had indicated that on direct examination that you saw those, uh, as you said, people that were friends with, as you said, friends with the victims who were up in the woods, right? Yes. And you asked them, now, they tell you what they're doing, right? Yes. They say to go find the motherfucker, right? Yes. Okay. And you took that to, tell me if this is fair, you took that as they wanted to go see if they could locate where this person was, right? I interpret it as they're going to look for the suspect. The way they said it, did it make, did it make you think that they were angry? His objective relevance was sustained. You say one of your cons tell me if this is fair. One of your concerns about them running up into the woods was that you were sending a canine, right? Yes. Was another one of your concerns what might happen if they run into him? Yes. Okay. Do you tell them to stop? I asked them to come back, yes. I don't remember my Zachary words said, but I asked them to not go into the woods. Okay. And they tell you they're going to look for them, and then you come back down into the river, right? Yes. Okay. Um, did you see any of the people that were up in the woods? Did you see any of them with a, with a weapon, a baseball bat? No. And you were um, initially told that this suspect was wearing, and I think you said scuba gear? Yes. Okay. What did you take that to mean? I interpreted it as some type of swim mask and unknown what pass I had, like, ranging from a snorkel and a mask to a scuba tanks and that type of gear. Okay. And looked like to me the people that were some of the civilians that were tending to a person that we know as AJ Martin told you that the suspect had gone up into the woods. Is that fair? Yes. Would you describe that situation, I don't know if you've been an officer for a while, would you describe that as a pretty hectic situation? Yes. All right. And you're getting um, a lot of information kind of thrown at you at once. Is that fair also? Yes, I was. Okay. And you're getting different descriptions of the suspect in scuba gear and the su and then he's got on shorts. So you're, you're getting all kinds of things thrown at you. Is that reasonable? Yes. Okay. Are you having some, I don't want to say difficulty, but are, are you trying to process what's happening in terms of the information you're getting? I'm taking all information in that is being yelled by um, people in the water, bystanders, and uh, disseminating out to the rest of the officers on scene and dispatch what seemed to be the most accurate information I was getting. Okay, in, in terms of making that determination as to what's the most accurate, what are you, just what are you basing that information on in terms of what's true and what's not true? Um, people that said that they saw the actual event happen versus ones that saw the aftermath of what happened. Okay, and the, so the people that are telling you what happened were, in your mind, the people that were near the people that were being tended to? Is that fair? Some people I question, your honor, uh, overall, overall, you can answer. Um, some people that I had, had asked um, in passing by, they said they didn't see it actually happen. And then the people that were tending to and in the area, um, the man in the yellow shirt was giving me the most information that had uh, detail. And so those people that were giving you that information, that was the information that you were trying to relay out. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. So then did you relay out that the suspect had run into the woods? Yes. Okay. Do 
you know now whether or not that's true? I do not. Sergeant, I don't have any other questions. Thank you for your time today. Mr. Smestad? All right. Thank you, Sergeant. You may step down. Everyone okay continuing? Anybody need a break? Let's continue. Uh, Mr. Smestad, who's next? Hello. 